We have some breaking news out of Puerto Rico. A new study commissioned by the Puerto Rican government reveals a new death toll due to Hurricane Maria. So let's get straight to CBS News correspondent David Begno. David, you are in San Juan, Puerto Rico. You've got this new information. Tell us about it. And Maria, we are inside of the governor's mansion known as Fortaleza here in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and we have been given a copy of the report performed by George Washington University. It was commissioned by the governor here in Puerto Rico, who his government paid upwards of $300,000 for the university to investigate exactly how many people died after the hurricane. And we can now report to you in this report provided to us by a government official who you're about to hear from, that the university says there were 2,000 1,975 deaths on the island from September of 2017 through February of 2018. Again, that's 2,975 deaths following the hurricane. Now, the report is quite lengthy. Uh, it is layered with context and detail that we will get into. We have an article that has been posted on cbsnews.com. Uh, but in the meantime, I am joined now live from Fortaleza with Carlos Mercator. Mr. Mercator is the executive Dire director of the Puerto Rico Federal Affairs Administration in Washington, D.C. Essentially, he is the governor's point man in Washington. He dealt directly with the university, and he has given us a copy of the report. I'd like to start off initially just by asking your reaction to the findings that you've been made aware of. Yeah, so, um, well, thank you very much for the opportunity, David. And uh, obviously, you know that this, it's a, it's, it's a very important issue for, for the government of Puerto Rico. We've been talking about, about the mortality rates uh, after the hurricane for, for quite a while. And, um, and we wanted to do it in, in the most uh, uh, serious way possible most uh, responsible way possible. Uh, so that's why this study was commissioned. Um, we always knew that that based on the level of the catastrophe that Puerto Rico suffered, that there were going to be a, there was going to be a high number of, of death. Uh, it was just only a month and a half ago that that Puerto Rico fully uh, recovered on on the power uh, energy sector, and uh, and then as as you have reported. Earlier uh, or before, you know that Puerto Rico also uh, uh, suffered in in its whole infrastructure uh, and in the servicing of, of uh, essential uh, services uh, services for the people. So evidently, uh, we knew that the number would be high when when we got. So what's your reaction to two thousand nine seventy five? So so it's um, one death. It's it. it Sometimes people talk about the numbers, and, and, and the reality is that we take this very seriously. Uh, 2,975, it's, it's, uh, it's 2,975 people who, who suffered, who went through, uh, through difficult times, and, um, and as, as government officials, um, uh, we, um, we, we, we understand what, what is behind that, and, and obviously we take this report n now trying to, 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 to learn from it. Learn from it so that in the future, and in future instances like the ones that, that Puerto Rico uh, uh, lived, that in future instances we're better prepared uh, for, for a catastrophe like the one that we lived. Let me read from a part of the report here. This is a summary of the findings. It says from the university's report, we estimate that in mid-September 2017, there were 3,000, there were 3,327,917 inhabitants in mid-February. And that by mid-February, there were 3 million, roughly 48,000. So you had about 300,000 people that left the island following the hurricane. The reason that's important is because in doing the study, George Washington University used the census, exactly. right? They used the census yeah. to estimate the deaths, and then they factored in how many people had left the island following the hurricane. Exactly. They used that as sort of a barometer to get to the number of excess deaths, and that's where you get uh, the 2,000. And, and, and it's an estimate based based on the out migration that we 
that we went through the, from the month after the hurricane. So, so obviously, it, that's probably one of the big differences from this study to the to other studies that people uh, have read before or that have been publicized. The other difference is that the GW uh, looked at the, at the number of deaths from September till February of this year, vis-a-vis right. uh, -vis other studies that had looked at the numbers from September till December of last year. So other studies had a narrower window. Exactly. And so, you know, we met, well, let's talk about the Harvard study. Yeah. They said there could be anywhere between 800 and 8,000, exactly. right? Um, another study performed by Penn State exactly. looked at a smaller number, yeah. though they used the mortality data from your government. Exactly. Now, George Washington University also had access to your government's mortality data, mm -hmm. uh, and they also factored that in. What is the government going to do now so, as so, a result of the study from so, George Washington? Yeah, so, so the study, it, it's, a, it's a long study. The study didn't only look at the mortality rate. It also looked at some other areas of the, of the response in terms of the protocol that was followed. Correct. Um, and the and, and and the communications process that that ensued in 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 um, in, in that in that process of telling uh, responding to yeah, the storm. Yeah, responding. And let me let me just add this, if yeah. I may, just for the viewers who are watching. A couple of things that the report point out is that uh, there was a lack of training for doctors on the island who didn't exactly know how to certify deaths after the storm. Well, but one thing that the report says is that there's a lack of training in the whole United States. That, that is that, that is there, true. That the, the one thing that the study shows. Look. The government, the governor, from the get-go, he said that he wanted to be as uh, transparent as possible. Right. That that was one of the main engines behind this study, because the process that we were following, evidently, was not sufficient right. for, for 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 the for the catastrophe that that we that we were facing, and 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 one one of those uh, you know one of, one of the goals of that transparency was that this number would be out this number uh, that we could give closure to this um, um, you know to this tragedy and then take those recommendations and give give a a good something good for the world because there's one thing that the study says which is that there is not one guideline on how to uh, count mortality rates for catastrophes like this one, correct, and uh, and one and when they when they point out that doctors didn't have the the, the right training for um, count counting like like death uh, re directly related to the storm, they point out that it's some something. That, that we lack in the whole in the whole United States. Correct, and, and Carlos is accurate to point that out. Let me also say this. In the death count that we're talking about, this number from George Washington University, uh, they are not only talking about deaths that were directly related to the hurricane. In other words, if a tree fell on someone or there was a mudslide, these are indirectly related deaths as yeah. well. People who may have not been able to get dialysis or who went to the hospital and the hospital was without oxygen. That's important to note. They also mentioned in the report, as you said, um, that physicians said in interviews to the university, we didn't know exactly how to fill out the, the death certificate form. We were afraid to write whether it was directly related to the hurricane. We were afraid that there may be a liability factor. They also talk about doctors saying they didn't get information from government officials as to exactly how to do it, and that there was this miscommunication between the Department of Health and the Department of Public Safety as to who was the authority figure to speak on the issue. To your point, mm -hmm. George Washington says there are other doctors around the country in the mainland mm -hmm. uh, who also don't have that training. But again, I want to go back to this question. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us some, some steps that the government plans to yeah, take no, definitely. because well, of this report? The, the report, it's, it's very extensive. Sure. So, so, so we're right, right now, uh, we're, we're, we are studying our, ourselves, okay. right? Um, and obviously, it has some very good recommendations that, that in the next couple of days, uh, the government will be uh, announcing how is it that we are going to be implementing those recommendations. Okay. Uh, I, can, I can tell you that that guideline that needs to be drafted for the world, we're going to start doing it here. Uh, and that, that's one thing that we're going to be doing because it's one of the main recommendations that uh, the study gives out. Uh, the, the George Washington University gives you a lot of things that you should do to exactly. get better. Yes. Five or six pages. Let yeah. me ask you this very clearly. Do you plan to implement every one of their recommendations? 
But well, honestly, we we there has to be a review of of all of those recommendations. Not 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 necessarily by me, but sure. by by uh, the different members of the of the of the government. Okay. And uh, and then you know we'll we'll take those decisions within the next uh, 24 to 48 hours to to identify those specific recommendations that need to be implemented ASAP. Uh, the ones that can be implemented in a, in a longer period of time, and the ones that probably uh, may, may, because maybe. Maybe ones that are not necessarily uh, um, that are related or that need to be done immediately. If you are just joining us, let me recap the headline as we have it. A report issued by George Washington University that will be released publicly tomorrow, but a copy has been given to us by the Puerto Rico government. Hurricane Maria killed far more people in Puerto Rico than initially thought, according accounting for an estimated 2,975 deaths on the island from September of 2017 through February of 2018. The study from George Washington found that those in low income areas and elderly men were at the greatest risk of dying. Mm -hmm. Men 65 and older yeah. died at a much higher rate mm -hmm. than others. Yes, yeah, that's very worrisome. And, uh, and uh, the, I think that's why this story, the study really, it's really, it goes deep into uh, some statistics that we will be uh, uh, further analyzing and uh, and obviously using them to create a new set of, of guidelines, a new set of, 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 of protocols that Puerto Rico and the rest of the nation can use for catastrophes like the one that we lived here. To and be they, a and, model for others. And, Look. Oh, uh, in the aftermath of Maria, David, you were here. I saw you at the uh, at the COI, at the uh, at the convention center, the days after the hurricane. Um, you saw what ha what what happened here. You saw the the uh, the suffering throughout the island. I, I don't think we, I've talked to many disaster uh, experts. All of them agree that the disaster that that happened here, the catastrophe that we went through after Maria, they hadn't seen anywhere else, uh, an entire jurisdiction being devastated by a hurricane. So, yeah. so, so evidently the number, we knew that the number was going to be high. We knew that, that a lot of people were going to be, so that they were going to be dying because of the, because. But why stop at 64? The government's official death toll well, because, stopped because at 64. Exactly. And that's a super good question, David. The reality is that we were following CDC protocols for counting the, the you know, for, for, for the mortality count. We identified that those were insufficient for the level of the catastrophe that we, that we had here. And, and so we had to do something else. This study proposes a, a new way of doing, of, of doing that mortality count. And, uh, and uh, we, Right now, again, we are in a process of analyzing all of the results of the study. It's, it's not like I can tell you immediately from, from the get-go, oh yeah, we're gonna be implementing everything. But I think one of, the, one of the points that they make is that this method that they're using to count that excess mortality after a catastrophe might be the way to, to use in, the, in other jurisdictions that might go through similar uh, situations like the one that we went through. And to your point, let me read from, from an article that's on cbsnews.com, and this is important to note. To arrive at the 2,975 figure, the study looked at historical death patterns from 2010 to 2017 to estimate how many people would have died from had Hurricane Maria not hit the island, right? That figure was then compared to the actual number of deaths from September 2017 to February 2018, and they got that from obtaining information and records that were provided by the Puerto Rico Vital Statistics Record Division and the Puerto Rico Department of Health to determine what the report describes as the estimate of excess mortality due to the hurricane. That's how they got that 2,975 issue. The report details that there was no concise way of properly determining what was a classified storm-related death. The Sorry. doctors didn't really know how. The Department of Public Safety didn't know how. And I remember the public safety director saying to us, well, we're just relying on doctors to tell us. It's up to the doctors. And what we hear from the report is the doctors didn't know. Yeah, they and, weren't uh, properly uh, trained. And the report is clear. Right. And, uh, and when, when it states that the situation that those doctors have faced here 
during that catastrophe or during the catastrophe, it's probably a, a situation that can repeat itself in probably in the 50 states because there's no set of guidelines. And, and that's, I think that's what, again, like I, like I mentioned before, that's one of our priorities to start working on those guidelines because this kind of a catastrophe is going to happen again someplace else. Maybe, you know, and, and we just want to make sure that we use this study to really draft up a plan that, that, that can prepare the government uh, for, situa- for, for, for a future situation like this and, the rep- the report- and, and, and that we can prevent than this number of deaths. The report reveals that the best planning you guys had on the books was for a Category 1. We know Maria was a Category 4 when it hit the island. Yeah. It had been a 5, but it downgraded one mile well, but per in, hour. In some places of Puerto Rico, it, it was felt as a Category as 5. As a Category 5. Yeah. But let me ask you this. You guys had only been in office, the Rocio administration, for eight months before mm-hmm. the storm. Mm-hmm. Do you feel, after reading the report, mm-hmm. the, the obligation in any way to apologize to people here on the island. We, we, we definitely understand that there were a lot of, uh, uh, so we've committed errors in the process. We, um, I, don't, I don't think that during the, you know, the, again, the days of, after the hurricane, uh, the, 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 all of the different crises that we had throughout the island, um, and then again, the loss of, of essential services as water, electricity, um, there were a lot of a lot of things that that failed in that response, and uh, and we take responsibility for that, and uh, and definitely we you know we we when this number comes out, we mourn those people that died, uh, you know, uh, it, because of the storm, and we have a responsibility of making sure that we prepare Puerto Rico for a, for a, a, a future event like this. Uh, and with that we take this study and we come up with a with a with a strong um, uh, and and profound if you want to call it that way uh, plan for for not only here for our island not only for our people but also for the rest of the nation because as the study points out there's there there isn't a good guideline to follow on on how to on how to work with the mortality rates or how to, or how to account for, uh, for, for death uh, out of a catastrophe. And, and, but also it points out things that, that probably are missing in all of the plans that we have around the nation. Um, so, uh, so also I want to point out here, David, Puerto Rico, when, when the hurricane came, Puerto Rico was in a very um, fragile... Uh, Bankrupt. It had filed for bankruptcy. Exactly. Yep. Um, and obviously, we had been recovering from Irma that came in on September 6th. Correct. Uh, on September 6th. So, so evidently, and we had, we had done a great, uh, I believe that the recovery of, of, of Irma had, had, had been very successful. Um, but no one, no one, I think, uh, probably understood the the level of devastation the vulnerability yeah that that a category f- five category four hurricane like maria could have caused to the entire island so um so um we hope that out of the results of this study uh we come up with it with a with a um with again with a strong uh set of guidelines set of plans for for our preparedness but also for the preparedness of the united states if um, you know, they might face a catastrophe. They need to have the right set of, uh, of, uh, of plans, and we want to be those that, that set the standard for that. Carlos's boss, the governor of Puerto Rico, Ricardo Rosselló, is expected to announce within the next 24 hours plans that his government will take as a result of the study. Uh, there will be much more on CBSNews.com here on CBSN and tonight on the CBS Evening News. Carlos, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, David. And